Believe it or not, I've been stopped by police after I became a cop. We used to walk to Washington Heights with two other cops, friend of mine, and we would get got thrown against the wall just for walking down. I, I'm not saying don't stop the criminal. I say don't stop the innocent people. My name is Del Polanco. I've been a police officer since uh, 2005. I came to New York, I was 10. I uh, came from a third world country, the Dominican Republic. I grew up in Washington Heights. Those shootings almost every night, it was a daily thing. The 34th precinct used to have a cop come into um, my sixth grade class. She used to come every Wednesday and I used to look up to her like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. I mean, this is what I told my father, I think I want to be a cop. For me, it was a dream. In 2009, uh, the commanding officers require us to have a 120 and 5 quota system. 120 and 5 means one arrest per month, uh, 20 summonses per month, and five uh, stop question and frisk. So basically, they wanted to stop at least one person a day. But what happened the day you don't see the crime? What happened the day you don't see the violations? People start getting creative. We will stop a person in the street and in the corner because um, the sergeant says stop him. Why? You don't ask. You stop him, you frisk him, you see if it's possible you search him. In this case, sometimes they're just walking home from school, they just walk into the store, they just, they're not doing absolutely anything. They're not doing absolutely anything. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a really humiliating feeling. When they go through your pockets, when they stop you, you don't have no freedom. If you stop and then tell the officer, I'm not, I don't have to give you my ID, I don't have to give you my name, which is within the law, the law allows you to do that, you're gonna get hurt. In the Bronx, you're gonna get hurt. My turning point was with uh, a bunch of kids in a corner, stopped by the commanding officer. There was a 13-year-old mix in the group, uh, Polanco cuff him. He said, for what? Cuff him, you don't ask me a question, cuff him, bring him back. Um, his brother come to ask what was going on with my brother. He's walking home from school. Officer, did he do anything stupid? Uh, the commanding officer looked at my partner and told her, cuff him too, bring him in. For what? Oh, we will figure it out later. Just bring him in. And that was my turning point. That was the time I said, you know what? Why should I do it to a kid that's just walking home from school? That we know is not doing anything. Why should I do this? This is not what I became a cop for. This is not what I wanted to do. I live for my kids. I, I, and I think of them. I think of them one day being being slapped by a cop, like it happened so many times in the street. I'm thinking of them being handcuffed and screaming to the cop, I haven't done anything, I haven't done anything. What are you, why are you arresting me? I haven't done anything. I don't want them to go through that. If you get violated by a cop, how are you gonna trust that cop? How are you gonna come up to him when you see something if this is the same cop that threw me against the wall, and this is the same cop that went through my private parts looking for crack that I didn't have, why should I help him? You should be working with the community. It's written like that. You should be getting community trust. There's a lot of things that can make the community safer. Stopping and harassing innocent people is not gonna make the community safer. <laughs>